Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One Good Vibrations. Last night, I saw a video made by someone who had visited the Maxim Memorial Station at the American Radio Relay League, W1AW. And the, he showed photographs of the station both from the outside and the inside. And from the outside, the building looks just the same. And it, it brought back memories, just the same as when I served as an operator there in 1977 and 1978. Good Lord, that would be something like 40 years ago, would it be? Or would it be 50 years ago? I can't count that long. I can't count that far back. I, but I can remember the code practice that I copied from W1AW as a junior high and high school student and the mesmerizing effect that the sound of their Morse code had on me and how much I enjoyed copying, and I mean copying, on wide-ruled notebook paper with a roller tip or ballpoint pen, copying that code and increasing my speed from 10 to 13, 15, eventually copying bulletins at 18 words a minute and 20 words a minute because my <clears throat> ultimate goal was to obtain the extra class license, which I did sometime around 1972 or thereabouts. I don't remember exactly when. But the code, uh, you had to know the Morse code at 20 words a minute, both sending and receiving for one solid minute. Uh, and uh, you had to prove that at the FCC field office, Federal Communications Commission, that was in an old and elaborate, ornate old courthouse building in St. Paul, Minnesota. And I remember my dad taking me up there for that test. The examiner being very strict, uh, forcing uh, a solid copy for a minute and actually making me send for a solid minute perfect from a printed, pre-printed sheet of paper. But I remember the enjoyment I got out of simply getting into some kind of a trance-like state and copying that code and improving my speed. I would always print. I didn't write cursive. I always printed. And I got up to a speed of about 25 words a minute before printing was no longer sufficient. And then I got up to maybe 30 words a minute, uh, but that was more than enough to pass the extra class test. I also remember the theory test, uh, which was just as difficult as the first class commercial license theory test that I had taken just a few weeks ago. I, did, I just took that uh, exam to see if I could pass it, to see if I could get that license, and I did. I did qualified me to be an engineer at a broadcast station. Kind of ironic in light of the fact that only a few years later I applied for a job as a W1AW operator and I'm sure that that qualification didn't hurt me any. But you didn't have to know the Morse code. I remember W1AW code practice and during the video this fellow uh, showed W1AW being printed out their code practice being printed out by a computer, but I remember the, the sound of that code. And he gave us a tour of the interior of the building, not a, a very thorough tour by any means, because he didn't want to take a whole lot of your time, as I don't. I'm trying to avoid that. However, I remember the transmitters back then, and they're much different today than they were then. The antenna farm is similar, but the actual antennas on it are different. I remember some of the terrors I got during severe thunderstorms with those 100 plus foot towers. Uh, we had to keep right on operating that station 
transmitting those bulletins in CW. And if we had, if we lost power, we had generators. We had the works. Only a direct lightning hit that fried all the radios could knock us off, and it never did. But I do remember the mesmerizing effect, even as I worked at that station, of the code practice and bulletins going out into the world from W1 AW. And I was there, and I was responsible for making sure that it happened. A dream job for a kid radio ham, if ever there was one. Until it got old, and the winters in Connecticut got old, and I moved to warmer climes, where I found out that paradise is nowhere on this earth. <laughs> Hurricane Andrew, 1992. Stanja Belisco, W1GV, saying 73, use their code practice at W1AW. I believe they still send it. It's a great way to improve your CW skill, even though knowing the Morse code is no longer a requirement for an amateur radio license in the United States of America. So long for now. And da-da-da-da-da-da. Da, 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 da.